Well, good morning. Welcome to, to First Lutheran. I'm, I'm Ben. I'm one of the pastors here. And what a joy it is to be here together, to be in this place on this special and holy day for this special and holy occasion. We know today that we've got folks out on a live stream, and, and we want to welcome all of those folks who are with us as well. It's good to be together. And it's really strange and overwhelming and fun to have people in this sanctuary. We have not had that for a long time. And so, wow, that's all I can say. You've no doubt noticed that we've taken some precautions today so that we can gather safely. We're, we're distanced, we're, we're wearing masks, and um, we're going we're gonna to be abbreviating our service. It'll be shorter than, than it typically would be for a, for a confirmation Sunday. As you entered in today, you, you were ushered in, and, and at the end of our service today, you will be, you'll be ushered out as well. And so we ask that you wait until, until you are ushered out. And I know that every fiber of our being wants to, to hang around and chat, but the, the best, and have that time of fellowship, which is such an important part of, of being the church together. But we ask today that just for the safety of all, that we we don't do that. We just exit. Um, today is a sacred, and it is a holy time that we share together, and it's, it's so important, and it's so good that we are here together. We begin our journey of faith at, at the waters of baptism, and today we remember that important event as we arrive at this next milestone in the life of faith, and we celebrate these, these young people with the affirmation of their baptism, and we celebrate today all of the things that God is doing in their lives. The one that was here to hear our morning cry has been there every step of the way, and that God is, is, is here among us today. We begin this time of worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this day and for each one of these young people. We give you thanks for their families, for their faith, and for this community that, that surrounds them today. Thank you for each one who has encouraged, prayed for, and nurtured these students in their walk with you. We know today that there are many. Continue to bless and guide each one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please ride, rise for the gospel reading. A reading from John 6, verses 5 through 13. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half of a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed those to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Here ends the reading. You may be seated. Well, it's great to, to be with you this morning. I'm going to do what I've, you know, how we're creatures of habit, and I'm going to do what I've been doing for the last six months because it kind of freaks me out to see all you guys here. 
I, I literally, for over six months, I've been looking at that camera at the back of the room with nobody here. And it's amazing to see all of you here. Okay, I didn't expect that. So, so I'm just going to sit here like I do when I preach. And because uh, I'm preaching to you folks who are here. And I'm preaching to those folks who are online, who are watching as well. So we, want, we don't want to forget those dear folks as well. So Jesus said to his disciples concerning all these people, they don't need to go away. Give them something to eat. And the disciples said, we have nothing here. I like stories. Maybe you do too. I want to share a story. Uh, it's called Stone Soup. You've maybe heard it before. Um, it's a classic, and I think it fits perfectly for today. A hungry beggar came to a small village one day looking for some food. And at each door that he knocked, he was denied with a different excuse. Times are hard, said the woman at the first door at which he knocked. There isn't enough to spare, said the man at the next door, and he closed it quickly. The harvest, it's been so bad, said the next. And on it went, excuse after excuse after excuse. And so he decided to go to the village square, where he asked those around him to build a large fire so he could make what he called a pot of stone soup. He wanted to do this for the entire village. So the people were kind of intrigued. What's this guy up to? Stone soup? Never heard of that before. So they built this large fire. And then they brought this big cast iron pot full of water and they set it over that fire. And as soon as it started to boil, the beggar started to stir that pot. And then he did an interesting thing. He took a, a large stone out of his backpack and he put it in the pot. And he stirred it a little more and he said, you know what this soup could really use is a little salt and pepper. This young boy ran home and he got some. And as soon as he returned, it was added to the soup. And the beggar stirred some more and then he tasted it and he said, you know, it's not bad. It's, it's actually pretty good, but, but it'd be even better if we had some carrots. And this little girl said, well, we have a few carrots left in our garden. So she ran home, brought them back. They put the carrots in the soup. He stirred a little bit more. He tasted it and he said, not bad at all. But you know, <clears throat> if we only had some potatoes, that would make it so much better. And maybe a few onions and I don't know if anybody has any meat and three villagers hurried to their homes and, and they returned with those items and, and they too were added. And, and by now the, the soup was smelling delicious. People started gathering more and more around and they wanted to see what was happening. The owner of the mill who had never given anything away for free said, I have some barley back at the mill. He went and got it. A young couple with a cow went home and, and they brought back some milk. The beggar stirred it all in and the savory aroma was just overpowering. It just got better and better and the beggar kept stirring a little bit more and tasting it and, and finally he said, it's ready. And with that, the tables were set and people brought bread and they brought cider and they laughed and and they enjoyed every single bite of that stone soup. You see, there was more than enough. And no one went away hungry. 
Well, that story reminded me of the one we just heard Kim read a moment ago. On that particular day, there were lots of people. They were getting hungry. And at first glance, it it looked like there was nothing to eat then as well. But then this young boy had the courage to come to the disciples, to come forward, and he gave his, his five loaves and his two fish to be used. Wasn't much. In fact, he could have been kind of embarrassed. But Jesus took him seriously. And he took those loaves. Scripture says he broke them and he blessed them. And guess what? There was more than enough. And no one went away hungry. It bothers me so much that our world tries to convince us that that we aren't enough, that we don't have enough, or that we don't know enough. So many get caught up, so many of us, in comparing ourselves to other people, watching what they have and and kind of discounting what we have. But it's really a lie. A lie that too many of us have bought into for way too long. In the early days of the pandemic, do you remember back six months ago? It seems like years ago. But the message was we were going to have shortages. So what happened? We grabbed everything we could. The shelves were empty. I've still got a box of tuna helper in my cupboard. Why did I buy tuna helper? I have no idea. I guess I had tuna at home. But you know, when we look back with a little bit of perspective, we realize despite all the hysteria and all the fear, here we are. There was enough for everyone. It's so easy to to get knocked off track, to lose our way, to to forget who God is in our lives and to forget his promises that that he says that Jesus said, I'm gonna be with you through it all. Which is why I think we need the church, why we need each other. Not a building, but a living, breathing community of faith that you're surrounded, that I'm surrounded with and by today. We need each other to point us back to to Jesus, to get us back on track, to remember the promises that are ours. And when we forget, the, the church reminds us why we're here. Whether we're young or old or somewhere in between, it reminds us who we are. It reminds us that we've We're each loved deeply and that we've been each given gifts that every single one of us have something to offer. If you leave with anything this morning, I hope today, whether you're mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, student, whatever, I hope you you leave today wondering what that is. What might that be? What might God be doing in me and through me? What might God's dream for me be? How might God use us? Just like that day out in that, in our gospel in that field, Jesus invites us to look around. Take a look. See what the needs around us are. And then Jesus says, go to it. Trust yourself. Add that bit that is yours to the soup. Don't be afraid. Jesus says, I'll be with you through it all. And together we can make this world a better place. Be a sign of hope. Be a giver, not a taker. Reflect the light and and the love that is ours, that Christ actually is put within every single one of us. Reflect that in our words. Oh, how we need good words these days.
reflect that in our actions. And just think of the difference that we can make. I get really excited. This is what makes pastors excited. Thinking about the difference that you young people can make as you face a very, very challenging world. The difference that we as parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and mentors and, and sponsors can make in the lives of others. And I look so forward to seeing all that unfold. Let's pray. Lord, help us to see the world and help us to see ourselves through your eyes. Instead of seeing what we lack today, help us to see what we bring. Use us, Lord. Bless and use every single one of us to touch this world for you. In Jesus' name, amen. There are so many milestones in our lives. And today we we get to gather and we get to mark this important milestone in the lives of these wonderful 10th graders. And it's it's a privilege for us and for you to to celebrate and, and to surround each one of these young people as they affirm their baptism and all that that God is doing in and through each one of them. Confirmands, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you stand as your name is read and just stand right where you are. And uh, the rest of us will just be mindful of the fact that, that as each one of them stands, they are bringing something to that big pot of soup that God is making. They are, they are bringing gifts, these gifts of faith that, that God has placed in them and all of the things that God has done to make each one of these unique and wonderful. So, Kim. So please stand as I call your names. Zachary Adolfson, Zayana Arndt, Ingrid Apodaca, Erica Archer, Hunter Athey, Kaylee Behrens, Hannah Boris, Riker Bozik, Jack Breitzman, Sierra Shermach, Ben Cook, Alexa Egebraten, Elena Fugelstead, Augie Gulbrunson, Elena Gunther, Max Hess, Briar Holmvig, Cohen Hovde, Kaya Isendorf, Gus Johnson, Kelly Johnson, Tyler Klute, Bryn Costers, Joe Lampsky, Keegan Lucy, Mason Mittog, Joe Moga, Zavin Netzelman, Madison O'Shea, Summer Overland, Jacob Peterson, Sydney Peterson, Henny, Henry Ramstorf, Elijah Rasmussen, Eric Reinecke, Jasmine Ritter, Isaac Saffert, Braden Schlagen, Landon Seward, Trip Shattuck, Evan Strand, Cody Vattenstall, Cole Vattenstall, Tyvin Worry, Nia Wessel, Sam Wicken, and Colby Wackel. And now, confirmands, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. I'm going to ask you a question, and I will prompt you with a response, and we'll have you respond. Do you renounce the devil and all of the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. 
A plus. <laughs> You're doing good. Parents, would you please stand as well? Or all of us can stand, actually, at this point. And, and join us as we confess our faith together. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we confess the faith that we share in Christ who calls us and makes us his own. And we know as we do this that, that those folks who are online are, are participating as well. I'm going to read these statements and then I'll have you say amen. And, and our confirmands did it so well to be prompted with a response. I think we'll all <laughs> follow in that, in that suit. If you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, say amen. Good job. If you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, say amen. amen. If you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, say amen. amen. May God keep you and all who believe. In the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll have everyone but our confirmands be seated. Confirmands, you have made public profession of your faith. So I ask you, do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, would you respond, I do and I ask God to help me. I do and I ask God to help me. To the congregation, people of God, do you promise to support these young sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, would you respond, we do and we ask God to help us. And we ask God to help us. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You've called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gift, gift of your Holy Spirit, and nourished them in the community, community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought into new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to have parents stand again, and we'll have you stay where you are, and, and parents, place a, place a hand on your child, and I, we can all do this. Anyone who's here can place, stand and place a hand on, on a brother or sister or, or whoever is with us, and we'll pray this blessing upon you. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in each one of these young people the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm their faith. Guide their life. Empower them in their serving. Give them patience in suffering. And bring them to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, confirm the work that you have begun in these young people. Help them to find their place in the church. Continue to guide them all of their days that they may know you, love you, and serve you more faithfully. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Just a couple things right when we're done here. Um, I'm going to invite you guys to stop out there and get the bag, a little gift bag for you. And in there is a little worship service that you can do at home. So if you have other people at home with you that want to do it, or if it's just you, you can go ahead and do that. We typically do a confirmation journey here at church, but of course we couldn't this year. So we're sending that home to you to be able to do together. 
I'm so proud of you guys that you're confirmed. This is so exciting. It's so, it was so exciting to see you walking in the doors again. Um, you are a group that like, really leaves a mark wherever you go. Um, there was a bathroom filled with these one time. I don't know what the, what are they called? Post-it planes or something? You throw them up and you stick them in the ceiling. But that's, of course, one mark that you leave. But you also have so many, so many times you've done so many amazing things. Um, whenever I've called on you to do um, a service project, especially, you rise to it. So whether it's moving furniture, packing up the living nativity stuff, um, packing college care kits, tying blankets, making cards, setting up for meals, ushering, and the list just goes on and on. You have said yes, and you have shown up. My hope for each of you is that you keep showing up, and you keep leaving your mark on this world, because it's a mighty fine mark that you leave. Thank you, and congratulations. Thanks, Kim. Now may the God of all grace who created you, who claimed you in baptism, and who calls you to follow him, continue to walk beside you as you seek to serve him in this world. Amen. This morning, um, we aren't including a, a formal offering in our service, in our worship, um, but as you leave, you'll, you'll find two secure offering boxes at the exits. Um, just a reminder that your support um, is what makes confirmation and everything else happen. I baptized uh, a little girl, a little baby this morning in between 8.30 worship and now. And, and I told them how in just a few years, they'll be just like you. And they'll be bringing their daughter to confirmation. And, and they'll be walking through this. And, and along the way, they'll be encouraging and praying for and praying with and, and reading scripture. And, and then they'll be at a day like this where that little one, that little Nevea, will make a commitment and an affirmation just as you do. So when you share a gift with us, that translates into ministry in this church and we thank you so much for that support. We pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today we, we get to have a blessing sung over us.
Thanks, Paula and Randy. So go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, because we do take precautions seriously, as Pastor Ben said um, at the beginning of worship, we we do ask that you uh, wait for the ushers to usher you out and then that you go directly to your cars. I know we want to take pictures and, and all of those things. We want to talk. We want to catch up with each other. Uh, but we just ask that you would cooperate with us on that way. In fact, why don't we just take a picture right now? Take your phone out. Why don't you take a selfie? Take a selfie with your, your parents or moms and dads. Do you know how to take selfies? Let's take a quick selfie. I'm going to do it too. I can't get you all in. Could you squeeze? No, just kidding. There we go. This is going to be one of those events that we'll probably talk about for years to come. You guys are great sports. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being patient with us these days. Now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all God's children said, Amen.